just arrived at the train station in Bergamo, Italy. I can already tell I'm gonna like this place because wait for it, look up there. Yeah, I'm gonna end up up there. So maybe not today, but at some point before I leave here, I will end up there. Yep, gotta check that out. Right now I'm gonna walk to the hotel. I'm pretty tired actually. It's about noon, it's right at noon. And I've been on the train all day since this morning. Left Vincenza, took the train to um, Brescia and then transferred trains from Brescia here to Bergamo. So for four euros 90, I got a 24 hour pass and it works on both the funiculars they have here in the city. It also works on all of the buses. One bus trip is one euro 50. I don't even know how much the funicular is by itself, but I think that's a pretty good deal. You can actually get one for eight euros 50 if you need an airport transport, but I don't. Um, so I went for the 4.90 one. I think that's a pretty good deal. So we're gonna use it. From Upper, this is actually that's actually Upper Bergamo. I'm actually at the fortress, which is even higher up. So I'm in the old fortress, San Vigilio. It's gorgeous up here. This area, which I've not even explored yet, I came straight up here. Um, this area is considered the upper town. This is like the old fortified. The entire um, upper town is a um, stone wall encircling it. You can see the stone wall here on the left side of the screen. And we're going to be able to walk that stone wall too. I do love walking. I do love a good walk on a stone wall. I love my fortified cities in Europe. Let's go do some more exploring. But take in that view. Woo! Yeah.
Pompey Fortress. Climbing up the turrets is uh, no joke in the dark. It's a good thing the daylight out because that's the only light that we had while it was creeping through. It's a beautiful fall day and just look at the valley. Beautiful little towns in the valleys of these mountains. See that church off in the distance just tucked in there. Beautiful. I love how they've got the landscape tiered on the hills and looks like some kind of monastery down there or something like that. I'm not sure. Not just in Florida, not just in California. He's everywhere. If Florence is the home of gelato, Bergamo is the home of stracciatella, which is not my favorite flavor. But we're here, so we're gonna have to have some. I don't know if we'll have some here or at the original place. Right now I'm hungry for food. This is kind of the big pedestrian area. The Piazza Vecchia is this way. This is the Piazza Vecchio in Bergamo, Bergamo, Italy. This is in the upper town. You can take a funicular here. There is another funicular that goes higher up. Um, those are steps there to get to the walled fortress area. The walled fortification, I should say. A lot of gelato places, a lot of sandwich places, a few restaurants, lots to see and check out. I am very hungry, so we're gonna get some food as soon as I can find something that just I can't live without.
in a nod to fall. Today is November 1st, so it's still fall. I got pumpkin gelato and persimmon gelato. I'm pretty excited about these flavors. So I feel like definitely giving fall its due, even though I see Christmas decorations already in the main town. And I know people are starting to talk about Christmas. November 1st, 2023. It's still fall. Such a nice afternoon. Hearing people play music. Looking at the beautiful church here. The baptistry. century. I'm not going to go all the way in because they're charging admission and I just kind of anti that. I'm going to see what I can see here before they don't let me any further. I wish I could tell you more about this, what this is. Latitude, longitude. Oh, they turn on the lights up there. It's really pretty. It's amazing they have this huge basilica. Literally feet from this huge cathedral. It seems like a little bit much. And then the basilica entrance is here. There's a chapel here that's really just a small little room. 
So while the basilica was built in the second half of the 12th century, the little chapel was not built until the 1400s, 1472. And the cathedral de Sant Alessandro was built in uh, 1688. Well, it was started. It wasn't, the dome wasn't completed until 1853, and the facade was not completed until 1886. It was built in the same site where, in the 5th century, the Cathedral of St. Vincenzo, co-patron of Bergamo, together with St. Alessandro stood. After rebuilding the church in the Romanesque period, a new church was erected in 1459. The basilica, which we just, just stepped our heads in for a minute, is full of Baroque, Baroque artwork and uh, frescoes. Baroque stuccos, tapestries, Lorenzo Lotto's famous inlays. Um, it's a lot though. We saw a little bit of it. It's a lot, I would say. All over Italy, I see dogs everywhere. It really makes me miss my little dog. So the tower was completed in the 12th century. The bell, making it a campione was added in the 16th century. When the bell would ring, it would mark the curfew for the town because this was a walled town. And so if you were not inside the walls by curfew, you were locked out of town. You couldn't get in. The walls would close at a certain time, the uh, gates to the walls, and you would not be let back in. You pick your piece of pizza and they're large pieces but they charge you by the by the weight and then they bring them over here and they throw them in the oven for you and you pay and then cut it up for you Time for me to head back to the uh, hotel for the night. Thank you. 